Welcome to the Artless Trends Report 2025. We are the host of the 505 podcast. We got Chase Etley to my right. My name is Braden Figueroa and I got Costas Garcia to my left. Now we are three full-time creatives. We've been doing this show for 131 episodes, which is pretty crazy. And today we're taking over the Artless YouTube channel to bring you guys the trends for 2025. Chase, tell me a little bit about what's in store. This episode is going to focus on the 2025 Artless Trends Report. We're going to focus on creativity, compliance, agility, and inclusive strategies. And we got some AI. Sure do. Oh man, it's yep. going to be crazy. Yep. Coasty, how does Artlist kind of wrap into this whole thing? Artlist has been honestly at the forefront, I would say, of innovation and, and including AI into their software. I mean, the thing that comes to mind is the AI voiceover that they have included. You can type whatever you want. There's so many different voices, so many different tones. It is awesome what they've done and how they've included AI into Artlist. I also think with Artlist, it's the creators that are at the forefront of a lot of the things that they're doing. They're constantly partnering with some of the up and comers, people that are dominant in our space, people that we all know and love. And I think that something that's really cool that they do is they empower creatives to go out and like make the things that they actually want to make. Like another thing that pops into my head is their 100K fund. Absolutely. Like they're giving away $100,000 to a creator and trying to, you know, push someone to go out and make their dreams come true. Trend number one that we're going to be talking about is this idea of the human renaissance. And I think as AI comes more into the forefront of what we're doing, that human touch is going to be so crucial with just everything that we see. Like, I think that as like the idea of like an avatar that's an AI version of you, like comes to actually into fruition, the thought of having like a real authentic creator that you know is actually putting their, like their editing, their shooting and like everything about them is in the piece. That I feel like is where everything's going to drive towards. Yeah, it's interesting because as they support so many creatives art list, you can still see the creators, all their touches, even if they use AI to supplement it as like a toolbox, you know, like you can use AI as a tool to like assist and edit, like get you set up or the voiceover, maybe just to get started. But once the final product is there, it still feels like so human. And it's just getting there quicker and easier with AI to like overcome these obstacles. Yeah, I feel like it's, you're using it as a co-pilot. Yeah. It's not, I think that the idea- You're still flying that plane. You're still flying the right. plane, right? But Ricky, he's pulling it. He's and pulling the, the buttons. lever, yeah. hitting a couple buttons and helping you kind of get there along the way. Something that comes to mind is Casey Neistat, when ChatGPT kind of really came to the forefront mm -hmm. and became a real thing, he made a video about typing into ChatGPT, create a Casey Neistat vlog for me. And then he made it and it just didn't have any soul. It, right. it wasn't a true Casey Neistat vlog. It had like the bones of it, but it's him that makes his vlog so special. And so like you guys were saying, it's important to utilize AI as a tool, but not it's it's never going to replace us completely. Totally. And I think something that's very interesting from the Artless Trend Report is the idea that creators putting their own like unique spin on videos and short films specifically is up to 42%. And last wow. year was at 30%. So we're seeing a big jump in people making short films that are about their culture, about somewhere where they've been, somewhere where they've lived before. And I think that idea of the human touch can be seen in that jump from 30 to 42%. What I think is so interesting also about that is I feel like we went so far to like the uh, retention editing, yeah. fast cuts. Now I feel like it's kind of going back to longer form content and you really can see a lot of these talented creators making short films and creating longer pieces and really bringing their soul into their art. And you really see that, I feel like, on YouTube nowadays. I also feel like there are a lot of obstacles, at least there were a lot of obstacles to make a short film before. Mm -hmm. And now that AI can help you get started or like help you organize your footage, it's less daunting. And so you can focus on your creative output in actually a longer, bigger project, like a short film, just using AI to help you get started, which might be why those numbers are up. Yeah, and I think... Of the creators who I'm most drawn to right now, it is those that are really being like vulnerable. Mm. It's not just this very like cookie cutter, you know, type of video that we've been seeing these last few years. It's like things that are very story driven, that are very unique to a very specific person. And that's what I feel like I'm so drawn to right now. I think what makes us drawn to our favorite creators is when they're able to bring their personal experiences into their videos and into their content. And that's something that AI could never do. AI doesn't know your story. And content is the most authentic when it's the most real and it's it's a personal experience. And that's just something that AI could never uh, emulate. 
Yeah, it needs a director, yeah. Absolutely. How do you guys feel that creators are going to have to like keep their work feeling fresh with AI being integrated into a lot of the things that we're doing? You know, like when you get a new camera for the first time or like a new lens and you're like, oh, I could shoot something at a unique focal angle that I've never shot before. And you're like, wow, you start getting all those new ideas. You know, like, oh, I could put the camera really close to that thing. It's the same with AI where it's like, oh, I could have this crazy voice, voice over my thing, just using Artless voiceover product. Like the ideas start flowing. What kind of videos could I make? You know what I mean? So it honestly expands your horizons of like creativity and what you could do. And that allows you then to like make new stuff and make your stuff even more original because you're coming up with new ideas. I think you just have to be careful to not let it define your yeah, whole totally. thing. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like like we've been talking about, utilize it as a tool, allow it to support your, your vision but you have to bring your personal experience and your personal touch into your videos and content. I think that's what also drew me to a creator that I think we all know and love, Emma Chamberlain. Like sure. her yeah. videos feel so authentic to her. Like if you popped it on and I didn't see, I didn't see her. The other day I was watching a YouTube video that my girlfriend put on and I had no idea what she'd clicked on in like a minute and I go, this is Emma, right? She's like, yeah, this is Emma. And you can, it's so distinct. Yeah. And like, I think that as this comes more into the forefront of, into like our workflows and what we're doing, that idea idea of keeping the things that make you unique is going to be like huge going forward. I Creators need to tap into that, that unique thing that we all have. That's so, it's just like, you're one of one. You have that thing that makes you special, where you came from, what you do, like your background, like all that stuff you got to talk about and share it. You could give two different creators the same script or the same footage and the edit comes out completely different. And it's because you're pulling from, you know, different inspo or maybe you wake up feeling one way one day and then the next day you're like, oh, you know what? I'm feeling maybe the edit to go a different way. But it's it's staying true to yourself and continuing to make things unique. Another thing from the trend report that I thought was very interesting is 30% of creators are using AI to kind of spark an idea. And yeah. I, I feel like that is uh, something that we've explored with too, is like, Absolutely. you know, trying to say, hey, we have this concept. Could we get five more ideas like it? And then mm. finding one of those and experimenting from that. And I think that's been very interesting for us from an AI perspective. And I'm curious to those that are listening, like, what are you using AI for? Or what do you feel like maybe is like out of bounds like yeah. you would not use it for you know? right. and I'm, I'm curious because I feel like there's so many things that we can learn and leverage from having instantaneous help with right. something instead of you being stuck in a block and you're like I have no idea an idea that's coming to me and it's like let me see if I can spark something from asking you know to get 10 different ideas off of something and then seeing where that takes me down a rabbit hole I feel like we've talked a lot before about how you just got to make something and sometimes getting started is the hardest part. It's by far the hardest part. And if you just have a tool that can just read you off like five ideas of just, just to get you over that little hump to actually get started, I feel like that is huge. And then use your human brain to, you know, make it happen and make it unique. Another thing going off of like the, the human side of things, a creator that I love, and I think both of you guys love as well, his name is Gox. Mm. And what I love about him is like, he's an artist. So he literally draws and paints, but he also makes films. And bringing those drawings and paintings into your videos, that's that's tangible. Like yeah. AI can't do that because it's digital. Bringing mixed media assets into your videos also brings that human element into your content. I love when a video, like Dan Mace does a great job of this. Like you watch it and it feels handmade, yes. which is weird because it was done on a computer. But like, it just feels like you made it with your hand. And honestly, I watch one of those videos and I want to like go sculpt something with clay, even though it's a video, like it just feels like tangible. And like, I love that feeling. It's like Van Nuys when yeah. he's making all of these different things in his videos. I'm like, I'm not even handy. And then I'm like, about to be. let me go get a toolbox uh -huh. and, and break some stuff and try it out. <laughs> See what the deal is. Put it is. back together. Put it back together. <laughs> Trend number two, we got balancing quality and compliance. Now, this is very interesting because as AI, I feel like comes more into the forefront of what we're doing. You got to be open and honest with the people that are watching your content or consuming it and let them know, I feel like, what it is that you're using, correct? Yeah. Don't you think, I mean, it'd be weird if we made a YouTube video and it was our AI faces, for example, like a year down the line. Sure. It's like not us. It's yeah. an avatar. We're, we're like not podcasting, really. <laughs> we're just typing it in. We don't say anything and it looks pretty damn similar. Right. People are like, is that really you guys? Or we just... That'd be weird. We need to be transparent. It's even like if you take a photo of, say, a cool building and all of a sudden there's like this sick mountain behind it. <laughs> People are going to look for that place even, you know, the mountain wasn't really used AI to put it in there. You kind of have to tell them. Now, I do feel like sometimes 
AI can be used to say to like, just remove like a logo from a shirt and you generative fill it instead of like whatever, just doing it yourself. I don't think you got to tell people about that. Yeah, if you I don't agree. type anything into like generate this, mm -hmm. you're fine. But if you're making mountains behind buildings, you should probably call it out. And I do think that is really important so that everyone kind of understands where we're at and what is real so we can move forward in like a real human space. How do you guys think creators can decide which AI tools are worthy of investing in? I think it comes down to two things. I think it comes down to quality and reliability. And I keep going back to Artlist, but like the AI voiceover, it's quality. Like the voices that they it's, have, it sounds so real and it's reliable. Like, you know, you're going to get a great product after you type in whatever you want it to say. Dude, the breaths in that, like <laughs> I typed something in and the voiceover lady was like, getting hyped dude she was like getting hyped for what i typed in and she like the breath she was like getting breath here towards the end and my girlfriend's mind was blown dude it was so impressive but yeah reliability because you need it to work and you need it to work and not sometimes sound like a robot or weird and you need it to be high quality what risks do you guys feel like brands or creators have in ignoring like the idea of quality or compliance or using ai tools that aren't following guidelines i think you run into the risk of being inauthentic yeah authenticity is at the forefront of brands or at least should be i think the brands that we resonate with the most are the ones that are most authentic because we resonate with their branding and the story that they're telling through their content and so if you're not focused on that, you kind of just come off as a fraud, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think, dude, as as this continues on and people are using, like, let's say an AI tool to make a video, like they make a video and it's just you type it in, it makes a video. Not knowing the back end of what is happening for that piece, like, do you have legal license to put that behind an ad? Do yes. you have right. the legality to go put that in a commercial? Like, I don't know. I don't know, depending on the platform that you're using. And I think that you really do need to ask yourself those questions and email the teams behind the things that you're using and say, hey, like, if I go use it for this, am I covered? Or if we use it for this campaign, is that okay? Like, where is that gray area of like, you can't use it, you must pay more money or whatever, you know? Yeah, getting into the, like the licensing and actually uh, making money off of said content or art, I think it, you get into a sticky situation. And the AI platform that you're using, you need to make sure that they're up front. They, they say, we license, say for our list, we license all these people's voices. We had them read a billion things, I'm sure. And so you have full license to use their voices for voiceover. But like, that's not always true with all their platforms and you could get burned. So you need to make sure. I think the thing that I would do if I was a creator and you're using said platforms, whatever they may be, I would email like the yeah. support team on them and on whatever their website is, I'd email them and I'd ask all these different questions that you're thinking of. Like, can I use it for a campaign? Could I use it for a commercial? Am I allowed to use this on social? Do I have to pay more money if we use it for a campaign? Because the last thing you guys want to do is one, two, three years from now, because I feel like we're in the Wild West. Mm -hmm. Like right now, it feels yeah. like the Wild West of all this stuff. It's all so new. There's emerging people and there's emerging businesses that are overseeing this stuff. It, I feel like it's not just one source this second. And so in the future, I think that right now, find different players at these companies and ask them questions based on the usage, the licensing and all that stuff. Because the last thing we'd want you guys to do is two years, three years from now, you're having to take down all that stuff. Yeah. Another thing you could also look at from a quality perspective is just how well the website is built. I yeah. feel like you can easily so tell if something's like kind of <laughs> scammy, like off of the the website's branding. And you look at like the user interface of Artlist, it's like so easy to use and looks so professional that like you wouldn't question it. But if you go to a, an AI site and it looks like an AI platform <laughs> made the website, yeah. like maybe be a little bit more cautious. It's like when your mom like gets a computer virus. I'm like, why are you on this website? Like <laughs> I would see this website and even though it's telling me like this is good furniture, you should buy it. I like, I know it's not real. You know what I mean? And you never feel like that on like a proper website. It's like 92% off. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like no. And like it's all white and like there's no yeah. parallax in the movement. Like, yeah, you need a nice website. That's important, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Trend number three is fleeting trends and nimble teams. Now I think what's really interesting as TikTok TikTok has became like huge in our culture and in our society. We've seen trends come and go every day. Like every day. Every yeah. day there's a new trend. And it's funny because a lot of the brands that I see hopping on these trends are usually like two to three, four weeks late. Oh, yeah. They're like posting these a month after they're gone. And it's like, wait, wait a second. You guys are running this as an ad now. Yeah. Where was this when it was actually happening? I feel like as someone that makes some of those videos for big brands, a lot of times the team's too big, dude. I, uh, the video will be ready. We'll see it. We'll see the trend. We'll make the video. 
it's done. And then there's teams, there's levels that needs to go through. There's approvals. There's different ideas going around. Legal. You, legal. You can't get anything made in time. And then it's a month later and nobody cares. And I feel like you got to have a nimble team that's reactive. And we can just be like texting, like, this is interesting. Let's go outside, meet on our skateboards bikes stranger things style get out there and make this now and like if you're if there's just three of you it's a lot easier than if there's 55 of you i do think it's really important to be just lean and mean um i also feel like with trends because like you said they're fleeting if brands are just hopping on all the trends and just trying to like get some views get some people to their page you still need to have your authentic content that is you that is not a trend but it's just like who you are on there so people if they come to see you from the trend, then they see, oh, but this is who they are. Because if you're just doing trends, you're just following everyone else. You don't have an identity at all. Something that I think is very trendy right now that brands should not hop on is there's this v- meme that goes around of someone that's in a stretcher, like in an ambulance, and mm-hmm. they fall out and they roll. Okay. And, and, and like they fall off the stretcher. And then the next video is someone from like, you know, a, a car dealership and they're like rolling and then they like pop up and like, oh, hey, we're at blah, blah, blah thing. Yeah, oh, I love it. those videos. <laughs> Dude, but I've so noticed pages doing, that's all they do. Yeah. Sure. And there's not any like identity towards it. It's just like, oh, come check out this car or whatever. And some of them get views. Some of them don't get views because it's leaning off of this video that like went viral for the person like falling off of that right. thing. And I think that that's that similar instance has happened with so many different brands across all of social. Like you go on their pages on TikTok, you go on reels on Instagram and it's just these trendy videos. There's no comments engaging with like what it is that they're talking about, what it is that their product is. It's just like, Oh, that little video had, you know, 30 or 40,000 views, but there's no connective tissue that brings the whole thing together. Just how a trend can be fleeting. Like a brand can also be fleeting. Like it can be here. It can be popping because it hopped on a trend. You get a lot of eyeballs and then it's like gone because like you guys said, it has no true brand identity. Another trend that we've seen on TikTok is the Wes Anderson trend. It's cool. It's fun. At the end of the day, that is Wes Anderson's style and he's made a whole career off of it and like as a filmmaker it's cool to to emulate and get inspired by it but like at the end of the day that's not your own true style so it's like as a creator like you don't have a true identity right you just got to be careful yeah I think that if I was a brand I would be thinking about what is the big picture of what like our mission is who are we trying to talk to who's our target consumer how can we help them how can we provide value to them the trends are like it's just something fun that you can add in. It should not be the overall like marketing strategy of let's just go make trends every single day and we'll try to like pounce on something that's hot and then we'll be seen for a second and then we'll be gone. It's like, it can be something in there. I feel like if I had to put a percentage on it, I'd say maybe like five to eight, nine percent, maybe 10 percent of everything that you're doing could be like hopping on and being a part of the conversation if it makes sense for the thing that you were talking about. I think it should be part of your strategy on social because I think there is something to be said about like, okay, if this trend is hot, I can get some more eyeballs on my brand. Then once they take a look at my actual brand and my content, they'll really get a vibe for what I actually am about. Yeah. I think that, like you said, it should be 10% of your page. It should also probably take about 10% of your time that mm. of the things you're making, because one, that means you're making it quickly. So it actually stays on trend. Two, you need to invest most of your time, most of your energy into making pieces that feel really true and authentic to yourselves. And the trends should be something quick, you know, say it's a video, like we're talking about, set up an iPhone, do the trend in five minutes, get it done, post it. If it's something that's more brand identity, that should take storyboarding, it should take like effort and really thought, like thoughtful stuff. So allocate your time differently. I also think that for brands, it's important to have like a nimble lean process. Mm -hmm. Like you shouldn't have to send it to 17 people to see the the trend that took five minutes. It should go to like one creative person, a legal person to probably Probably. oversee it, right? Unfortunately. As much as we don't want to say it, (laughs) it probably has got to go to them. Sorry, legal guy. Right. But, you know, that process, instead of it going like a campaign video and it's like, we got to send this to the creative lead and then we got to send it to the creative director and then the executive producer, like we're getting into such a problem sending it through 74 different channels of feedback that by the time it actually gets to being posted, the trend's probably totally different. Oh, yeah. It's totally changed. And the video itself isn't the original video that whatever your creative or your internal creative or the influencer creative that you hired, it's completely different. And then people don't receive it the same way. If a video is a trend video and it hits V 
nine. There's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> it should only go V3 max, I would say. I think you're right. I also feel like if you are a, like a big company or a big brand that just does have a lot of employees, you make nimble teams out of the employees that you already have, you know, three to four task force teams that are just like you hop on that trend, you're fast, you're nimble and you get it done now. It's really important. I also think that keeping a team nimble allows you to just understand your community a lot better. Like a smaller team allows you to kind of be more in the trenches and trends come and go every day. Just because something is hot doesn't necessarily mean you should hop on it and create around that trend because maybe that actually doesn't align with your true brand identity. And so hopping on the trend actually hurts you more than helps you. Trend number four, we got collective creator marketing power. Now this is from our friends at Goldman Sachs. This is mm. actually insane. If you're creative, I would definitely listen up right now. So right now we're at $250 billion in the creative economy. And they're expecting that by 2027, I want you guys to guess, what do you think this number is going to be at? We're at 250 billion. We're at 250 the billion. Creator the economy. Creator economy. Where's okay. that going to go? I think it's going to double. So 500 billion. Double okay. it. What do you think? Double it, pass it Give on. Give me 501 billion, Bob. $480 billion. Dollars. That's so, so close. Much. You were close. You were really to close. It. I was you also won. really close, but you not as close as he was. It. Yeah, it's fine. Yep. Thanks for being That's insane. right on top of it. <laughs> I was closer. <laughs> that is such a big number. Can you believe, though, that it I was off by a billion, I guess. That is a lot of it's money. It's a ton of money. Still yeah. off. Way off. When you think about this, though, if I was a creator listening and I don't have a camera right now, I would go to the nearest store. I would get a camera and I would get in on this like renaissance of what's about to happen. Well, I would even say like most people have a phone, smartphone. Right. Get on the it. cameras in your phone are, are so good. Like you don't even you don't even need to go to the store and get a camera. Just start right. creating stuff on your phone. Go in your pocket, baby. Dude, yeah. I just think it's so important to start making stuff. And that is an insane number. And if that doesn't inspire you, if, if you weren't inspired creatively already, Get inspired financially, dude. That's insane. Yeah, th this is another really interesting stat from Mayan Sarig. Now, this is the head of comms and partnerships at Meta in Israel. Okay. And they're saying from their studies that 60% of people, they trust what a creator says more than like a traditional brand. And so I think that's really interesting for the brands that may be listening to this, thinking about where to put your marketing dollars. It's the creators. It's the creators in this new era. Like those are the people that if I personally like something... I'm going to share it with my audience. Right. And I think all of us as a whole, we have this deep trust with the people that follow our pages and have supported us on this journey because we understand that that trust can be broken yeah. very quickly. If you're taking mm -hmm. on a partnership that you actually don't care about and all like, it's very difficult to build trust and it's very easy to lose trust with people. What you're saying though, with people trusting creators more than the brands makes sense because like, Say uh, DaVinci Resolve says, our product is awesome. I'm like, of course you think that. <laughs> but if Sam Colder says, our DaVinci Resolve is awesome, I'm going to believe him because he is, you know, a creator that uses it. It's like my grandpa, so my grandpa used to own a restaurant and he had a sign outside that said, highly recommended by the owners, which is a hilarious sign. <laughs> but also it's kind of the same thing. But if they're highly recommended by people that are coming into the restaurant, you're going to believe them a lot more. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting too because they found that 64% of people said that they would switch brands if their favorite creator said that they were switching to something else. I'd I, fall into that 64% yeah, for, sure. for sure. Yeah, you would, for sure. Dude, they tell me to jump, I say how high. Yeah, dude, Sony Canon, dude. <laughs> Who would it take to switch to Canon from Sony that you would switch? Part of that uh, 500 billion. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. sure. Yeah, it checks out. Yeah. Like you resonate so much more with a creator because it's one person. You feel like you can trust them if they're making authentic content. You're resonating with them, their art, and them just as a person. You're like, when you resonate with a single person, a creator, the trust is there just so much more than a big brand. I feel like when a big brand is trying to tell you, uh, like, use my product, buy my stuff, it feels more salesy. Mm. But if a creator is telling you, go check this out, it just feels like a close friend is making a recommendation to you. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, I, I should go check that out. At least I'll try it once. Mm. If I don't like it, I can make my own decisions. But he likes it. I like him. I'm going to go try it out. Something that was interesting on our last pod that we did on the 505 pod with Emma Jennings was she was saying, we're asking her like the difference between paid and organic with like these big brands. Yeah. And then she was like, they're just all ads. 
He's like, whether it's paid, right. whether it's an ad, like right. doesn't matter if it's just going up on their page. That's still an ad. If I was a brand going into 2025, I would make a large list of creators. I would honestly like interview them like a job application. And yeah. I would see, hey, is this someone whose vibe we really like? Is this someone that we want to support? Because if you're putting your marketing dollars in these creators pockets and helping them grow their businesses as well, if they align and they like your product, they're going to scream it from the mountaintops. And like, I think that that is when you get this perfect synergy, which I feel like Artlist has been able to find with us. Like we've been working with them for over a year. They take care of us. They help us pay our bills around here. But we also literally we also love use them it every day and use them before they said anything to us Exa ever. Exactly. Yeah. It was like, it was when, is, when we sense. got the call, I was like, you're kidding. This right. is a brand that we are. I'm, I'm on I'm your website right on, now. I'm already on it, dude. <laughs> right. I'm already using the music. <laughs> right. And I think when you find people that are already like, if I was a brand and consumer product, advertising, digital product, landscape, whatever, I would go look at the creators that are already using our stuff and talking about it for free, that are already using it and telling other people about it because those are your mavens. Those are the people that are spreading the word about your brand or business for you without you even having to talk about it. And I feel this way with anything that I find that I love, like I'm texting you guys in our group chat. I'm like, yeah. yo, I love this thing. You guys got to check it out. And like, if you two text me about something, I'm going to go try it. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? My advice to brands, if they're going to work with creators and they should, is instead of just doing one-off partnerships, form a relationship over the course of six months to a year, do longer term contracts. Because the more you can have a creator talk about said product, the more trust is going to be built with the audience. Like we've all seen creators just do one-off brand deals where they talk about a product and you're like, this is cool, but I know that you kind of just got to check for the single Instagram post. But if you switch it, instead of doing a one-off thing and being like, I want to partner with you. We're going to create some awesome content over the course of the year. I want you to introduce our brand and our product to your audience. It feels way more authentic. And I believe, what is it? You need to see something like seven, seven times, times. Yeah. Yeah. before you actually take action on it. And so that would be my advice is like, choose creators that resonate with your brand and your product and work with them over a longer period of time because it's just a fact that like you need to see something seven times or more to actually take action. This is super interesting going back to the data for the report because I'm going to just read this. This is so interesting. There's been a significant shift in creator brand partnerships. While 35% of creators plan to work with as many brands as possible in 2025, 40% believe brands should establish long and meaningful mm -hmm. relationships. And I think for us too, like as we think about our podcast and like growing it, we don't want one-off deals with yeah. these brands. Like if it comes in and it's just a one-off, we don't really want to partner with them as much. We want to see brands that believe in our vision and believe in the future of like what we're trying to build. And it's it's also interesting because creator collectives are becoming a thing, which I thought was different than what I may have thought going into 2025. And like, that is what we're building here. Like we are a collective of creatives. We yeah. all do a little bit different things. We're all full-time in this. We've been doing it for like 10 years, right? And now you're seeing creatives kind of come together and like people are streamers are getting homes together. We sure. have creators that are like going and moving places and getting like a house for a month or for two months and three months. And I think, think about your squad. Think about who you're creating with, not just as a sole individual and think about how you can go collaborate with someone in a different state and go make something. And you can even figure out different ways to get brands on board with that yeah. stuff because you guys are more powerful as a team right. than you are individually. And that's how I feel about our show, right? I mean, I would even go off of that and say, if you're a brand and you're partnering with multiple creators, how can you bring those creators all together? Because right. everybody's more powerful together. It's like, let's say uh, Artlist, right? This is maybe just an idea. If Artlist <laughs> wanted to, you know, create some sort of like trip and we all go, yeah. okay, it's great that like the 505 podcast is creating- It's a great uh, idea. It's, really know, a good it's idea. a great idea. It's great yeah. that we're creating stuff, but like what if we were to like go meet and create with all the other creators that are working with Artlist? Like that would be so fun and feel so authentic. Are Hold you on. on the art list, dude? Oh, oh are, are we you all kidding? Get into the art list, dude? <laughs> They yeah. need to create a maybe club. Maybe like Greece or something. <laughs> or maybe maybe like, it's definitely something abroad. Yeah, maybe like yeah, yeah. Italy. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a business, a business class flight. Yes. Yeah. We got to stay comfortable. If you're on the art list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on the list. Another piece of advice I would give brands when working with creators is to give them creative control because the worst thing you can do is like give them a specific 
ad read. What I love about Artlist is they're like, hey, can you talk about this feature this week on your podcast? Like, but make it your own. They never tell us exactly what to say. And then it comes off as way more authentic because we're actually using the product. And then right. we're like, okay, this is how we used it. And this is how you guys can use it in your workflow as well. I think that the f- quickest way to make a creator want to just go inside a dark room and like never come out mm-hmm. is to give them an ad read that yeah. is yeah. word for word and say, we need you to say it like this. And that's, there's, that's our way or the highway. That's the worst way to get a piece of content back from them. And you, they're going to hate it. You're going to hate it. You're going to be like, this doesn't feel authentic. And, and it just won't perform as well. No one's going to care. Of course it's not going to feel authentic. The funniest video that Chase made this year, it had me dying, was a video that we actually made for, um, I'm not going to say motion right. Never mind. Never mind. I won't say God that. God damn, I wanted the compliment. I, but I'll give you a compliment on something else. Creators want to make the things that they want to make. Absolutely. Right? And mm-hmm. from the survey also, they found that 37% of people that were creating content for brands felt like they wanted way more freedom. Mm. And I find that with like all the things that we're making, like they don't want to be told what to do. Also, there's a reason why you're going to them to ask them to make a video totally. or to ask them to do a photo shoot or to ask them to do whatever. It's because they have the creative in their brain. They know what's going on. Like there's a reason why you're trying to pay them money to talk about your product. So let them do what they're the best at, create stuff. And like, it's not like, oh, I just don't want to be told what to do. It's more like my fans won't like this because they like what I want to make. Exactly. That's why they follow me. That's why you're what's partnering there, with me. Baby? And like, if I'm listening to a podcast, like I, there's some podcasts that I love and I can tell the host like I'll listen, I'll be listening to it, loving it. I can tell when he's going into an ad read because his voice changes because he's reading now. And as soon as I hear that voice, I just skip, 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 skip until I hear ah, back to normal voice, dude, let's go. Because it's not even him. It's not his brain. You know what I mean? So you just got to let them cook, really. And, and their fans will like that a lot more too. Friend number five, the cross-generational content. Now, what, what exactly does that mean, cross-generational content? Well, it means trying to create content that resonates with different generations. Everybody's on social media now. You have Gen Z, millennials, people. Older boomers, than, boomers, my parents, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so you need to find a way to be able to resonate with the different target audiences that you're trying to hit. But because each demographic is different and the content that they like is different, you're going to have to say the same thing, but slightly differently to attract different audiences. What's interesting is a minute ago when social first came out, like 2010, 2011, like our parents were on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Like we were all on Facebook to start. We were maybe in middle school, high school, whatever. And now it's funny because you would think that, oh, if I post or I see a video on TikTok that's very viral, there's a really high chance that my mom if she's on TikTok that day, has also seen said viral video. And I feel like that is like a first of its kind. Yeah. Like back in the day when we had first been on Facebook or on Instagram, you're definitely not getting fed some of these things that our parents would have seen on Facebook. It's not even in the same like ballpark or landscape. And now I feel like more than ever, the content that brands create or that creators make shouldn't just be focused towards like a very niche specific group. It's like, okay, if I were to show this to like a 60 year old, can they resonate with it? And I think a creator that does this really well is Ryan Trahan. Like yes. any any age group could watch that video. I could show that to my grandma. She'd find it entertaining. I could show it to a seven year old. They'd also find it very entertaining. And I think that creators need to be thinking about this. It's like, I'm not just making this for someone that's like 16 or 25 or whatever. It's like, I'm making this for anyone to be able to watch it, to be inclusive of all ages. And like, that is something that I think is going to be important going into this new year. Also from the brand's perspective, when you're thinking about what creators to work with, you know, there's creators of all ages and, and have different target demos, right? You take someone like Nike, they have Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, I think resonates obviously with almost everybody, but like more so with the people who grew up in the eighties and nineties watching basketball with him. Now it's like a whole different generation. People growing up now, like they're not watching Michael Jordan. Of course they know who he is, but like they're probably going to resonate with someone more like LeBron or even like an up and coming athlete. And so a strategy that I would use for brands is like bring on multiple creators and have those creators hit different target audiences. Yeah. Like you're saying, like there's a reason why every young kid loves the Minnesota Vikings, my team, because they love Justin Jefferson because he was in Fortnite. And they love him, dude, because that hits all the things. My dad loves Justin Jefferson because he catches touchdowns for the Minnesota Vikings, dude. (laughs) But also like seven-year-old kids love him because he dances in Fortnite. And that hit all the generations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Good for his brand. Good for whatever brands that sponsor him. I will say, though, I think brands need to be careful trying to target 
too many mm. different audiences because if you're for everybody, you're for nobody. Yeah. And so, yes, you can try to target different um, different audiences and, and different age groups, different demographics by changing the messaging, by changing the content, keeping the messaging relatively the same, but having the type of content that you make slightly different to try to target different demos. But just keep in mind that like, yeah, if you're for everybody, you're for nobody. So it might not be in your best interest to try to go after everybody. It does feel good when you see an ad that's like, this is for me. You know what I mean? Like this really works for like me, my friends, they would all get this. I almost want to send it to them. That does feel good. But I understand that you want to hit a lot of generations. To do that, dog videos, dude. Come on. (laughs) Dog videos? Yeah, everybody loves dog videos. loves dog videos. Me, love them. (laughs) So, hey, for your brand, get a dog, dude. (laughs) There's also dog influencers. Dog, yeah. You got to tap into these shared cultural moments that go after different age groups. It's not after just one age group. I think that you, you got to think about focus on interests, focus on values, and focus on experiences. Yeah, and it should feel relevant to what's happening in the moment. You know, if it's if it's gone too long, if you haven't made it yet, when it's no longer interesting, you know, it's time to move on to the next thing and make something that's maybe just for your brand or who you are. And think about these campaigns, not as just like, oh, let's go after this one singular age group. Think about how we can go after someone that would resonate with our brand that may be a little bit older, maybe in the middle, maybe a little bit younger and see how with different creators or with different ideas, different things, we can get them into our ecosystem and maybe they could learn more about what it is that we're doing well. I always find it so interesting when you come to the end of the year and you can see like what trends ended up happening during the course of the year. I always find that like stuff that happened in January, February, March, I kind of forget about. And you're like, oh my God, that was a moment. You know what I'm saying? What I will say though, is if you're a creator, what I want to leave you with is this, the best trend that's never going to go out of style is being you. And so be authentic, be yourself, bring that into your content, utilize AI for some help, but don't have it be your whole thing. And that's what I would say. Yeah. And I think if you're a brand, like we said, you know, lean on creators, let them do what they do best, what their fans engage with, and don't lean too heavily on trends that can't be your whole identity or else you won't have one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to download the full report, it's going to be linked in the description. Let's go.